To the debate itself, though, and this was an opportunity for millions of Canadians to make up their minds, perhaps, or at least get a better sense of what these leaders had to bring to the table. Often, politics can be an emotional connection, of course, between a voter and the politician in question. Frankie Sina is my guest. He's the director of the uh, Fostering Debate Talent Academy. Frankie, good to see you. Thanks for taking some time for us today. Hello, how are you doing? I'm good. You know, uh, I watched the debate, as you did as well, and I'm just curious what you what you made of it. You know, there's, there's lots to say. I think we've been hearing a lot about the format. It felt like a lightning round, you know, like a game show. And I love a good game show, but I don't know if it's giving Canadians the chance to really make a decision or change a decision. Uh, there were definitely some zingers, though, throughout the night, and, and I do think that it was enjoyable overall. I, I kind of wanted them to be able to sort of go at one another more uh, and take one another on. And, and so, you know, to a certain extent, sometimes it felt there was, you know, too much interrupting of the leaders going on, trying to stay on format or, or keep them in their lane. But, you know, sometimes you get those important pivotal moments when you just sort of allow people to actually debate and speak and talk over one another occasionally. <laughs> You know what? It's the contrast between the Canadian and maybe the U.S. Uh, <laughs> presidential election. It's, it's very different. I've commentated on both. But um, I do applaud the moderator for being, you know, authoritative and, and following the plan. But absolutely, we need these moments of actual debate and discussion and discourse. Is it sometimes Canadian politeness? You know, we're so kind and nice that sometimes that bleeds into the way we have political debates? <laughs> 100%. <laughs> Okay, what about body language? Uh, because that's also important. Uh, and, you know, we're talking about the nonverbal cues as well. What yeah. struck you last night? You know, uh, as a speech and debate coach, this is the thing that I'm teaching my students on the very first day. It's about human connection. And for me, the, the person that does this the best, although he didn't have the best night, I will say, say that Justin Trudeau does this the best. It's the eye contact. It's that direct sort of mesmerizing look that he gives straight to camera. And you'll notice he is the one looking straight to camera the majority of the time more than the other candidates because I think he knows, you know, the eyes are the, the weight of the soul in a, in a lot of ways. So I would give body uh, contact to Justin. Tell me a little bit as well about the idea that because he's the incumbent and no doubt he mm -hmm. and his advisors knew this going in, Frankie, he was going to be the one attacked from all sides uh, and that it was going to be sort of a pile on from different directions. Does that sometimes garner sympathy in people who are watching? It garnered sympathy from me as a viewer. You know, <laughs> in debates that I teach, it's two versus two or three versus three. So four versus one is a little bit tricky. So I thought given the circumstance of just being, you know, bombarded by four other people, um, that Mr. Trudeau did do a pretty solid job, but it's, it's a, you know, it's a one-sided battle. With the polls so short uh, between the two um, and, and so close, uh, what about Aaron O'Toole? How do you think he did? You know what? I think he did very, very well, but I am of two minds on this. So if I was watching as maybe an uneducated viewer, I would say that he maybe won the night because his composure, his politeness, his demeanor was so great. But he's kind of, you know, supporting LGBTQ plus rights. He's supporting, you know, over 90 percent vaccinations. But his party isn't singing the same tune. So for me, while he did a great job, I'm a little bit weary of this disconnect between, you know, the conservative leader and his party and, and what they're actually thinking and going to be doing. Hey, Frankie, great to have you part of our coverage the day after that debate. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right. Meantime, we're hearing the Bloc Québécois leader Yves-François Blanchet is in